Hey, everybody. Happy Saturday. Happy, happy, joy, joy. <laughs> happy Saturday. It is Saturday. Let's see. Oh, we got a full house already. Yay. Is your YouTube off? <laughs> no worries. We were watching a tutorial, getting some ideas. <laughs> Jello, Margie, first one in. Hey, Christy. Whoop, whoop. Yeah, she has plenty early too. Cool. Hey, Glynis. Glynis is back from Austria. Oh, whoop, hey, whoop. Glynis. Yeah, uh, I'm sure she didn't want to come home. Hi, Laura. And Jello, Mom, we missed you. Oh, that's sweet. And we get to make you do stuff with envelopes. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, yes. Uh, let's see who else is here. Scrolling up, scrolling up. Sylvia, still looking for my gessoed envelopes. I had a dozen prepared, really. Uh, they don't even need to be gessoed. Just bring, grab some envelopes. Annie. Um, oh, nice. Uh, Laura, she has started asking why. <laughs> Ooh, a green envelope in junk mail. That's awesome. Wow. That'd be cool. Hey, Sandy. Happy Saturday. Good to see you. I was going to ask for thumbs up, but y'all have done it. Wow. Nice. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Uh, for every typo, you have to use one. <laughs> for every typo, you have to use one butterfly. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> it's a good thing we don't have to type, right, Candy? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> for, every, for every Spico, you have to use one butterfly. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> Margie says, that's cruel. <laughs> All right, let me get this YouTube on here. There we are. Okay. How's everybody doing? Everybody having a good weekend? Happy to see you all. No, and it's a couple of days in between stuff. I don't know why. It just seems forever since we talked to anybody. So who is going to make envelope journals with us tonight? Anybody? Everybody, what size or what color envelope you have does not matter. I got some little in five. Just need five. One, two, three, four, five. There's six there. Just need five. I've got some little white ones here. I've got some craft ones, same size. I've got some large white ones here. I have one in process. I'm going to show you one that is completed. And then I'll show you one that's in process doing it completely different. So, uh, Sandy, yeah, we do love you anyway. Sandy's going to make with us. Sylvia's going to make with us. Sylvia, did you find envelopes? You only need five. <laughs> you only need five and they don't need to be covered. <laughs> uh, Laura, you making with us? Probably not. Glennis, who cares about unpacking? Grab your envelopes and sit down. <laughs> oh, Christy, Christy, you making with us? Let me show you this one. This one is using um, Nightfall from Minte. Uh, Laura's not making, finally putting all the ribbon uh, and trim. She bought the last six months on rings. Nice. Look like one of those impressively organized folk from the tubes. <laughs> Sweet. Very cool. Okay. So yeah. So this is Nightfall from Minte. This is a stack of the cards, you know, the, the cards that come with it that will go inside. A um, little bit of colorful fiber and some music notes, and that's so that you can sing. Um, you know, it makes me think of Phantom of the Opera, Nightfall. <laughs> All right, so this is actually just the same white string that I bind my books with, and I um, just ran it through the ink pad. I actually took this. Uh, set down the purple ink pad. It was, it's one of the little tiny ones. I put this on top of it and just pulled the string through and it changed it to purple very, very quickly. And I know I got a little bit of a, it's kind of thick paper. So I did, I forgot to spray it. So I got a little bit of a uh, white shine there as I, as I flipped it over. So let me just show you, this is just five Glennis will make it later. Awesome. Uh, this is just five envelopes together. And it's very, very simple. If you've never done an envelope journal, 
you know, there are so, so many different ways to do it. This is just a very, very easy. So if you've never done it before, you can put it together, know you can do it. And as soon as you see it, you'll think of all kinds of variations. So, you know, I'm trying to avoid everybody jumping in and going, well, I do it this way and I do it that way and confusing anybody who hasn't done it before. But uh, there are lots and lots of ways. And even with this simple way, you can add to this. You can add flips and flaps and folds and tucks and, you know, flip ups, flip outs, flip downs, all those things. Mom's been home for a whole hour. <laughs> I can't believe the bed isn't setting up for crafty. That's what I said. Who cares about unpacking, right? Yeah. Okay, so... <laughs> Artie said she's going to make it later, making, and she's going to make the oh, envelopes cool. out of pretty paper so she doesn't have to decorate them. That's oh, good. that's brilliant. That's brilliant. Hey, Cheryl. Cheryl, you going to create with us tonight? This is one of the um, buttons we made the other last week or so, and I just hadn't punched the holes yet. So I decided not to because it was a perfect match. This is something from my splat box but it was a perfect match for this. So um, underneath it, you can see there's a little bit of a gap there because underneath it, I just put a, one of the smaller buttons. Let's see, I think that'll, yeah, there you can, should be able to see. Just one of the smaller buttons that raises it up a little bit. And then the string is just tied around the smaller button. I did put a little bit of um, art glitter glue on it to hold it in place and tied it up and boom, there you go. Super, super easy. Didn't use a brad or an eyelet or anything. Okay, so, wow, I'm looking up on the screen or on the TV screen and this looks really bright blue, the front of this. Yeah, it does. Crazy, yeah. Cause on here, this is really dark purple and teal and wow, that's interesting. Well, it's very pretty. Either way, it's very pretty. So I always like to reinforce the this is a, one of the flaps of um, the envelope that becomes your kind of closing flap, although it's not really closing anything up, but it gives you something to put your closure on. And if it's tiny like this, I might extend this and make it a little bit longer. Um, okay, so the envelope that I used on this one is white, like this. It's not this one because this one is larger, but it was white. And all I did was distress the edge of it in purple just a little bit to match some of this paper. So, so this is all from Nightfall. So I didn't put all the cards in there. And so here's a pocket from the envelope. And you can see that, I mean, as you look at it, you can see, oh, I could put a little pocket there. I could put a tuck spot there. I could put a flip there. And I took a couple of the, the cards, you know, that come on that sheet. I always like to just leave two cards together um, I score them and fold them in half and then create a um, mini junk journal. This is just with paper either coffee dyed or from the splat box or that I've stenciled or pulled off the gel plate. A lot of times it's just, um, you know, remnants on the gel plate so that there's a lot of white there for writing. This is a really pretty one. It's lavender um, uh, dyed, lace dyed. Um, so, Hi, Hey Lucy, you know how all these cards have a picture on one side and a frame on the other side. I picked one. I put the, the pictures inside. I put the frame on the outside so I could just cut out a piece of, of the scrap from some of this. I just cut out a scrap that was the exact size to put inside the frame. And then this nightfall is the branding strip off the paper. So that's all that is. And you got branding strips everywhere you turn. So lots of them. And I can put little pockets here. And, and then because it's nightfall and it's got moon and stars and round light bulbs and stuff, I decided to do just a couple of little round um, adornments there and just punch those out and, you know, a little bit of glue on them, put the string between them. They look like those little, little light bulbs. So that's just an extra little journal that will go into that front pocket right there. Okay, so as we turn the page, this one is an open pocket in here. You could put paper down inside there if you wanted to. Okay, and you see lots of flat, I mean, every envelope on the back is going to have um, a solid page. So you can see where you could put lots of tucks and, and pockets and, and um, or just corner tucks that you could stick things in. 
here's a pocket right here. Another full page. And here's a pocket right here. Love this wood. Another pocket right here. And there's the back. So you can see why I say it's a very simple, basic journal. It's really like the bones of a journal. And once you know how to do this, you will be able to pick up envelopes and look at them and do all kinds of um, fun things with them. Uh, you can just expand, expand on it, expound on it, do, you know, go to town on it. Lots of fun through this. I think I wrapped that one too many times. But let me keep these, stick them in the pockets, then they won't get lost. Okay. So that is that one. And then I started doing one. I wanted to do a grungy one. That's all nice and clean lines. And I wanted a grungy one. I keep pushing this cockeyed. Okay. So this one is this craft envelope. And uh, Candy, if you haven't covered yours, I'm going to have you show it in a minute with the washi around it. Okay. Yeah, I haven't covered it yet. So we were discussing the only thing that, and this happens every single time I make these, the only thing that bothers me is having to be careful. And if I stuff this pocket full, be careful not to get tears right here where the pocket is. You can see how it's kind of sort of tearing right there, just a little bit. So I could put something inside and, and glue that together. And But I don't like that happening. And so we thought, why not put um, washi around the edges? That would give that some stability. And you'd want to put the washi down before you put your paper down or whatever you're going to decorate it with so that it could act as a border you know, and the paper could come right up to it. And so Candy did one with washi around the edge. She'll show you. And I decided to do this one with a book page as if it was washi. And so that's what I did. I took it all the way around the edges to give it all that extra support. And so then I started laying down scraps and basically just collaging scraps. Um, some of you have probably seen Louisa Heinzel. Um, she uh, started this technique of, she calls it jazzing up the scraps. Um, and Candy actually found that and um, showed me and I loved it. And so we've both been doing that to some scraps and we'll have to do it on a Monday or something because that's lots of fun. And uh, and it, it really makes for some, some cool scraps. Things that are just normal, boring scraps, you get them in there and you get all these cool looks. And sometimes I have to turn it over to see which side I like better. Scrap of a book page, but look how much more fun and textured it is. Music paper, same thing. So even these long edges off of watercolor paper or something like that. So that's been a lot of fun to um, play around with and do. But So that's what I've been using on this one. I just wanted to collage it with my scraps and so it still looks really cool, but yet it's got that grunge feel. And so I just started and got that, got these down. So I need to do, you know, inside there and I'll keep going. Um, well, do all these big pages first. So didn't even get that one completed. But that's what that is. And it'll end up working exactly the same. Put a closure on here, wind it around, or you could put um, Velcro or a magnet here to here. This would probably need more than one magnet because of the layers of collage. It's going to, you know, be quite strong. So that's an option too. So it does not have to be um, covered clean lines. It does not have to be covered grungy. It can be covered however you want to do it. Um, you could not cover it if you want it, didn't want to. Um, so I like doing it multiple different ways. So, Candy, let me make you a big screen and will you show them your um, washy edged one? I uh, went through and washing all the edges. It just gives them real good strength and stability. And actually, that looks really cool like that. It looks like a frame. So, if yeah. you were to make stencil on that and then, or stamp on it and then watercolor yeah. paint. There's That's a lot of things you can do with that. Yeah. I kind of like it. It's pretty. Yeah. I, it, 
a little bit wider one would have worked. I just got a skinny one. Yeah, well, that's okay. Oh, it's it's all really pretty. pretty. I had that match Antarctica. Oh, yeah. From this far away, I'm looking at it. I'm thinking, wow, you know, stamping some cool um, botanicals and flowers and things and then doing a little bit of watercolor on them would be really cool on white envelopes. Maybe I'll do that. That'd be pretty. <laughs> You're just going to have to do another one. You'll probably get, you'll probably get them all done. <laughs> uh, yeah, Laura. Yeah, salad tongs. Um, do you ever wonder why my? Oh, not back here. <laughs> Hold the phone one moment, please. <laughs> there we are. Uh, why my uh, nice pointy tweezers are always full of paint and mixed media stuff. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> and there's a couple of different ways to do that. And we kind of, you know, if you do it a bit, you kind of get a feel for what works for you. But yeah, I'm always picking, picking up the little pieces with this. What'd you say? Laura says someone is better at putting washi, washi tape on than me. <laughs> <laughs> and, okay, if you're going to use washi tape, remember to put down a little bit of glue first if you want it to stay. You know, don't complain that the washi tape is stick and This was easier with this one. You did glue stick. That works. I started with glue stick, but the, the wet glue was easier. It was quicker. The what glue? The, the just wet tacky glue. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yep. Sure. Yeah, any kind of glue there. Um, you, you know, don't complain that the washi isn't staying because washi isn't supposed to stay. That is the literal definition of it. It's Japanese paper tape meant to be able to put down, pick up, reuse, move around. So, yeah, don't ever think that, you know, I buy washi and it doesn't stay in place. It's not supposed to if it's true washi. So I'm just going to clean this up just a bit. All right. So you've got your five envelopes. And if you want, then number them one, two, three, four, five. Like this. That way, you know, you're getting them in the right place. But you probably don't need to. But I did it just uh, hopefully it would help um, the visual because they're all white. They're all the same. They're all the same color. And you're going to be surprised if you've never done one of these before, you're going to be surprised how simple this one is. And, you know, once you get doing them, like, I'll put these in and then, okay, here's where the envelopes meet. I'll leave it open underneath. And then you can even cut part of that out or punch a notch out of there. And you can have a tuck that goes up under there. And it's not this. It's between the two large sides of the envelope. You can also do it down from the top. Um, I didn't, on this one, I didn't leave um, even a side one open. And the one we'll do tonight, we'll do one, one side one open right here, a side pocket. But you can do side pockets, top pockets, all kinds of things. Once you know just the basics, you'll just have tons of ideas. I am confident. So, all right. So we have... Envelopes labeled one through five, or not, <laughs> we're going to take envelope number one and set it down. Hi, Mary. Welcome, welcome. Any size. Any size envelopes work. I'm using these great big ones, so hopefully you can see them better. I've got some smaller ones here as well. They all work. The two that I just showed you that are already done, they're two different sizes. Any size works, including number 10 envelopes, long skinny ones. Doesn't make any difference. Okay, so set envelope number one down. Then you're going to take envelope number two, and you're going to slide this into envelope number one. Now, it's important that two goes into one, so you have excuse me, the flap of one over here to be that front closure. Now, this is a, a difficult one to um, use double-sided tape on because, you know, trying to get it down in there with um, out the double-sided tape sticking everywhere is quite difficult. So I prefer, and I think it's easier to use wet tape now, you can do that two ways. We're going we're gonna to go ahead and glue this one down. The only place you want glue is along the flap of number two. This is envelope number two. The only place you want glue is on the flap right here. 
So you can put it on the flap and then you can slide it in here into number one, which usually works pretty well. And if you have another glue other than art glitter glue, it'll give you a couple of seconds to move it around if you need to. <clears throat> now, this is a large envelope. If you're using large envelopes, you have much more room here to open it. On small envelopes, you don't have much room to open it, but a large one, you do. So as far as how easy to make, it's easier with a large envelope. I'm gonna clip these together just so they kind of stay in place. And because this is a very thin flap here, it's very narrow, and I can open this all this way, I can come over here and just stick my bottle of art glitter glue in and some glue on that flap. So you can do it on the little ones. I put it on the flap and then I slide them in. And I try to remember not to use art glitter glue because it dries so fast I don't have any time to move it around and make sure I've got it, you know, lined up where I want it. So, okay, let me make sure I don't have any coming out from underneath that's going to glue my whole envelope pocket closed here. So I took envelope number two, I slid it into envelope number one, and then I glued that flap right down. So you should have the two like this stuck together with the flap of one on your left. Okay, now we're going to take envelopes number three and four. Here's three and here's four. And put three on top of four and line them up. And then I'm going to bring the flap from three down. And it doesn't matter whether you put the glue on three, the top of the flap three, or on the underside of the flap floor, flap four, but we're gonna glue these two together. So I'm just gonna put the glue and art glitter glue, it barely art is great because it dries fast. That's totally fine because I'm holding them in place. I'll make sure that they're perfectly lined up before I put that down. There it is. So they're three and four together right there. Okay. So envelope number three, envelope number four. I set three on top of four and glued the flaps together. Now, there are a couple of things that are slightly different from envelope to envelope, depending on the style of the envelope. And based on the style, there are some prep things that you could do to it before you start gluing it together. Um, like the envelopes that I'm using would have made it easier, but what I want to do is give you the structure of putting it together, and then I will do those things. And it also shows you that it doesn't matter if you forget to do them before, or you don't even think about it before, that you can um, make it just right afterwards. Okay, so everybody has three and four glued together, correct? So now they're acting like one envelope. We're going to slide three into two like that. So we're just going to slide three inside two. When I flip it over, I've got one in the back. So I want to make sure it goes all the way in so I can still fold envelope one over the top of it. Three and four are together even though they're split here, but I'm holding them together as if they're one because their flap is glued together. So three is going to slide into two right there. And we want to glue it on the outside of this flap. Do not glue inside the flap or you will glue it to the top of this. And now you can't get into your pocket. What you would have which would be okay, is a pocket, well, three, four, there we go. You would have a pocket back here, which is also okay, but 
for what we're doing today, the basic structure, you want to make sure. So I have three and four together here. I'm going to put glue on the outside, the outside flap. So that's literally the outside flap of, of envelope number four. But three and four are together acting as one. So what I'm seeing is three and I'm putting it on the outside of that. And then I'm going to take that flap and I always put it in dry first just to, just to fit it, make sure I know exactly how it's gonna go, where it's gonna go. And then I'm gonna slide this in there. I also wanna know how easily it's gonna go in. And I'm using art glitter glue because this it, these envelopes are large and it's super easy to, to get them in. If they were small envelopes, I would want a little bit more time to reposition because it's a little more difficult to get that flap inside. Okay, so now what we have is number two, number three, and I can get into both of those pockets, two and three. When I flap that over, I've got a solid, that's the back of three. And then I have four. I've got the back of four, and then I've got number one, envelope number one. So I've got one, two, three, four, right? So grab envelope number five. Envelope number five is going inside envelope number one. Just like that. Envelope number five is going inside envelope number one. So right inside the back cover, you should see one on the right and five on the left. Okay, so depending on the size of your envelopes, you can either leave that in there and put the glue on it or take it out and put the glue on the outside, the outside of the flap of number five, the outside of the flap of number five. And I should have taken it out because I just got glue on the inside of that envelope. That's what fingers are for. Get it out. Okay, so I'm going to push that back down in there because it came up a bit. Come on. See, I don't have much time to work with that. Art glue. Okay. And if it's not exactly even, it doesn't really matter because you're going to decorate it with stuff. You can even put a piece of washi tape, put some glue down, put some washi tape right down the middle of... I wouldn't necessarily do it there, but um, you could after you get this fixed. Okay, so that is your entire book put together. What you should have is the flap, envelope number two on the left, envelope number three on the right, the back of three here, envelope number four on the right, the back of four, the back of five, envelope number five on the left, and envelope number one on the right. So you can see that I wrote the numbers, I didn't say this before, but I wrote the numbers on the inside side of the envelope. You could write it on both sides. So when you're looking at it, you know, but um, in order, they are two, three, four, five, and then one. One is your back cover, which comes around to the front. Make perfect sense? Oh, thanks, Margie. I know we always have a few lurkers out there, and that's okay. We're, we're just glad that you're here. But we also want you to know that we don't bite. We'd love to have you say hi in the chat and uh, join us. And a thumbs up is always appreciated. The more, the merrier. So it's, it's always fun to meet somebody new who's coming in. Hey, Ginger. How are you, Ginger? Have you had a good weekend? Ginger, do you get all the time, do you get people going, oh, hi, Ginger, where's Marianne? <laughs> I used to get that when I was younger all the time. Oops, let me see if this. I 
Uh oh, we lost her. <laughs> uh, uh, well, ladies, I hope everybody's having a good Saturday night. Her device is not connected. <laughs> she unplugged her camera. <laughs> How's Gilligan doing? Yeah, that'd be a good one. <laughs> Marchie, that's just mean. <laughs> I just say Marianne died. It's left on the island. <laughs> uh, Marianne and the professor stayed on the island. <laughs> well, that was fun. Yeah. <laughs> Not. <laughs> Not. <laughs> Just say Marianne was Marianne died and was left on the island. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I used to get that all the time. They'd say, Where's Ginger? Uh, and I'd say, Oh, she's out with the professor. <laughs> oh, Karen, I hope you're okay. Um, here, she's, uh, yeah. Uh, oh, here she was. I was, oh, no. Yeah. Oh, right. oh, spider. oh, that's that's awful. So glad you're here. You better stay here. So if you start to get wacky, we know when we can call 911 for you. <laughs> Karen, oh, that's awful. What kind of spider? Why do I care what kind of spider? It's just it's creepy. I want to know she's okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she was bit by a poisonous spider. Karen Leg, she's in Oregon. Yeah, I know. He says, uh oh. <laughs> okay, so everybody, <laughs> does everybody have their their basic journal here put together? Yes, All right. yeah. so, now, what am I going to cover it in? <laughs> That's the question. So now, if you want, you could choose some scrapbook paper. You could choose scraps. You could choose um, paper that you have gel printed. I do I do want to finish that one. Maybe I can get to that one tonight. You could choose um, a, one of the nice uh, packs you have, like from Minte or, or Stamperia or Graphic 45 or something like this one. Um, choose anything you want. I will give you a couple of tips as we go along here. Okay, the first one is something I'm going to have to do right here. Also, going to bring this one out here to show you. This one's already, already um, put together. It's not glued, but they are put together. Okay, so if your envelopes are like this, where you have... A little flap that comes down here and then it's cut straight across but you've got this flap up here that's an inch or two inches or whatever it is what you need to do is take some scissors and cut I will show you don't cut the flap out you just want to cut right along the top of the pocket to the end, right there Okay, that's all you want to cut. And then you're going to glue that down. So your pocket will open up all the way to the corner. Now, if you leave it like that, you can choose to do that. You just have a much smaller pocket, but it will also help prevent it from tearing up there, like I was mentioning earlier. But if you want to do something like a book page around the edge to give it that border, or like uh, Candy just showed us the washi tape around the edge, then that won't be a problem. You could also choose to cut it just halfway if you wanted. I kind of want the whole, It's this is a small one, so I kind of want the whole envelope open so I have enough room to put some things in. So I'm going to cut those and just cut them even with the top of the envelope. And then you'll just glue this little flap right here, this guy right here. Just give them a little bit of glue, glue them down. Make sure it's not on top of, of make sure it's not on top of your pocket. So I always hold the pocket up so make sure I'm not gluing it to the pocket, thereby gluing the pocket down too. 
Okay, so you'll want to do that. And that gives you a much larger pocket. Okay, so on mine, mine's a little bit weirder because it does go straight across, but these go all the way up to the top. There is hardly anything right there at all. And that makes it really awkward as far as trying to get into the pocket. So I could um, notch out a thumb notch, but make it a nice deep one so that there's plenty of room to get things in and out. But what I really prefer to do is take a little blade, sorry about the arm right in front of you there, and just kind of work, some undo would probably work on this. I don't even know what kind of glue they use on it. So, But just kind of um, work this off a bit. Uh, a lot of times these envelopes, they come off so easily, even when I don't want them to. It's not usually a problem to even get in here. And 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 I'm not concerned if the paper splits and, you know, because it's going to be covered. It's going to be covered with something. Okay, so I got that one down a bit. I'll come over here and do this. Um, I haven't tried undo on this tape, but I, I should. Because I imagine it'll work just fine. Undo is a little difficult on um, is here. our glitter glue. Hi, Ome. How are you? I haven't seen her in a while. No, it's been so long. Hope things are well for you and your family. It's good to see you. Okay, then I'm just going to fold this guy down like that. Just going to fold him down. Now, if I went farther down on one side than the other, I can glue this little corner back down. Okay. And I am, you know, that's not exactly straight. I can tell that right there. It doesn't really matter unless it's totally bubbling up, but unless it's way wonky, it's not gonna once you put stuff on top of it. So okay, so then I'm going to glue this flap down. Yeah, I may. How have you been? How's your family? Everybody good, hopefully. Okay, gonna glue that down. And then I'm just gonna bring my paper, whatever I'm covering it with, right up to the top. And this actually is doubled now, so it gives it a nice um, clean edge. She says she's good. Good. Okay, and I will also come over here just like I did on the little one and clip this guy. Oops, got to get it in there and then glue him down. That gives that a little more stability. And I did go a little farther down on this one than the other. So I'm just going to glue that corner back down and all the glue just gives it more stability too. So I'm not worried about that at all. Okay. So this corner over here. There we go. Oops. Glue him down. And let's see, that's pretty good right there. Though, maybe it's the end. So I'll flap up. There we go. Yep, right there. That's what I saw flap up. Okay. Okay, so I've just created a deeper um, opening for my pocket right there. That's all. And it's a whole lot easier to work with. And that's, you could cut it off. Um, I like to fold it down because it just makes it thicker and gives it a little more stability. You know what? I'm going to try the undo on this. It should work. I don't know why it wouldn't. It works on all um, labels and stickers and, you know, price, price uh, labels and things like that. So let's see. And these are pretty old envelopes. I will tell you, if you're using undo, um, try, try to get price labels off things that's from the store. Um, the older the label, the longer it's been on there, the harder it is to get it off because that glue has aged and it's changed its chemical balance. <laughs> and so it just takes a little more. It takes a little more undo and it takes a little bit more working with it. There we go. That's coming off nicely. Okay. 
give this one too. And I don't bother folding these inside because you've got this piece that goes all the way down inside. There's no way to fold it inside and not have this be right in your way. So what I can do if I want a little bit, where did I put, where did I put, oh, it's right in front of me. <laughs> where did I put my ruler? Oh, it's right there. If I want a little bit straighter fold there, I can, yep, that's up all that. That undo worked really nicely on that. I can grab a, grab a ruler and just bring this up to the ruler to get a nice straight fold. Okay. Okay. And then I'm going to glue this guy down. Well, that's not straight. <laughs> Okay, and we'll check the corners. Oh, I didn't cut the corners yet. Check, I need to cut these first. So this is one of those things that it would be easier to analyze your envelopes beforehand. And if it's if you need to cut them, do this beforehand. That it'd be easier to do that, but, you know. But it's not like it's that difficult after you put them together. But sometimes you can't see why you need to do it. And so it doesn't really make sense of how to do it until the thing is put together. And so that's why I wanted you to have the book together and then go ahead and do this because now it makes sense why you're doing it. You know exactly how far to do it. And all of that. Okay. Oops. Got a little bit much right there. Put some on that corner. And let's see this one. Yep, that's down pretty well. This one isn't down very well right there. Okay. And that one. I try to not to use too much glue, then it's all over the place. So sometimes I have to go back and give it just a little bit more. Okay, so that's two and three. So now I'm going to flip over and I have the back of three and the back of four. So you can see this would be a perfect place to put um, pockets. Wait a minute. I turned too many. Okay. The back of three and the inside pocket of four. Okay. So this would be a good place to put a belly band, a corner tuck, you know, any other decorations, just like a journal page. I mean, this is essentially um, just a journal. It, instead of using paper, you're using envelope paper. And you can use a lot more than um, five envelopes. And you could also do these as signatures. So five envelopes here are a signature. Then you do five more are a signature, five more are a signature. And then you take those three and you bind them into your, into your um, cover. So, you know, any kind of paper, we can make a journal out of any kind of paper. Okay, so I've got the back of three and the front of four. So I need to take care of four. Why I put the lid on that. Get that one working. Get this one working. Yeah, this undo is amazing stuff. If you use double stick tape, this stuff is incredible um, on folios and things like that. Use double stick tape if you need to use your or move your page. You can put this down. It'll pick right up. And all you have to do is give it about 30 seconds. It evaporates and dries off of the tape and your tape becomes sticky again. You can do it on a stamp. That was kind of an amazing thing. You ever put a stamp on something way back in the day when you mailed bills or you mailed cards to people? You put a stamp on somebody something and then you totally mess it up and you you're trying to put it in a different envelope or something and you can't get the stamp off. This will take the stamp off, give it about 30 seconds for the undo to evaporate and your adhesive is sticky again. So because that happens so fast, just know that if you put this down on something and you wait too long to come pull it up, it's not going to come up because you put it down, it released it, you didn't pull it up, and so it sealed it up again. 
because it does not destroy your adhesive. The adhesive is reusable. And that's what the amazing thing of undo is, that the adhesive is reusable. So there is um, something in California uh, laws about shipping some chemical, some chemical that is in undo. I can't, I don't know what it is. They have a new undo for California residents. Yeah, we do. That it's been out for, for quite a while, but yeah, so well, this bottle is always yellow. Um, I have just a handful of ones that are green. The green is for California. We can ship the green to California with no problem. It follows all state laws crossing the border, you know, with the state border, with whatever the chemical is. So <clears throat> I do still have um, a bunch of these in stock if you don't have undo. Uh, last I checked on Amazon, they're still $11.00. And I did get a decent deal on them. So I've got them for $8.50. And that's, the California is the same. You just have to um, designate the California one when you order it. Not that I won't see on your label that you're in California. But by the time I see your label, your box is packed and uh, sealed. So, so it's helpful to know beforehand which one I'm going to grab and put in your package. So, so I don't have to undo it all. Undo it all. Ah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I know a lot of you have used undo. I didn't know about it for years. And it was a crafter that told me about it. And I'm like, what? Are you kidding me? There's really something that does that? I was blown away. And so impressed. <laughs> and and says, if you're taking apart an old paperback book with single pages, like an old field guide or something, stick it in the microwave for 30 to 40 seconds. The pages then nicely. Oh, cool. Because it is old and that heat um, will separate the glue. That's a great idea. Thank you, Lucy. <laughs> Lucy said, ask Debbie about people using stamps on parcels. <laughs> Uh, mm, Debbie, Debbie's not here tonight. I will, we'll, we will have to ask her that. We will have. Uh, Amy was asking if the undo is greasy. No, no, it is not. No, that's yes. the thing. Have any of you ever used a uh, Goo Gone? I love Goo Gone. That's that was our house staple before I found out about undo. But I would never, ever, ever use Goo Gone on any of my craft things, fabric or paper or anything like that, because it leaves a greasy residue and you will never get that out. So here's the thing. Okay. I put undo on this and now that it's evaporated, you can't tell that there was anything there. There is no residue whatsoever. It will not hurt your paper. It will not hurt your fabric. I, yeah, I was totally amazed and now I will never be without it. We've got open bottles all around the house. Use them for all kinds of things. Yeah, I still like Goo Gone, but I don't like to use it because it leaves a greasy residue. And I try to get it off of my fingers before I touch anything. And get grease on. <laughs> okay, so there's number four pocket. Oops, that went down a little. I mean to do that down. Oh, Lucy says she sent something to Debbie. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. And, and those of you who don't know, Lucy's in Canada and Debbie's in Washington. So she put, uh, she did it with stamps, huh? Any idea? How many, do you remember how many dollars worth of Little stamp <laughs> to use. <laughs> uh, okay, so that's four. I turn the page. Now I've got the back of four and the back of five. I turn the page. Now I've got five and one. So if your envelopes are already cut down farther, you don't have to bother doing this. This is taking me way longer than it should, only because of my style of envelopes. But taken off, she said. She hopes everyone has a great night. 
and she'll have to catch up on the replay. You too, Christy. Hope you have a great night and a good Sunday, and we'll see you in the group. Thanks for coming, at least for a while, while you could. Good to see you. I didn't want to get rid of these envelopes. The parcel was pretty much covered. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. Oh, Christy's just getting here. Okay, so oh. she'll, have to, she'll oh. catch up at the beginning. Uh -huh. on the, oh, she'll catch up at the beginning on the replay. That's interesting. Yeah, no, I totally didn't get that either. God dang it. I just put that on upside down. See, I can't. <laughs> I'm new. <Thank you. laughs> Christy, do you have envelopes? Were you planning to um, play along with us tonight? If you have em envelopes, I can show you in two minutes exactly how to get to this point. It's very, very easy. And you do not need to apologize. And, you know, you're always welcome. We're just glad. I saw you here way early. Oh, yeah. I, I, oh, she yeah. was here early. That's what yeah. it was. But that was like, it was like three hours early. Yeah. And then she... Um, she, well, she said she came in to set herself a notification so that it would remind her. But then, you know, she's got stuff going on at home, so... This is the first she was able to get back in. Okay, that one a little bit further. Yeah, Christy, do you have envelopes? Were you um, gonna uh, create along with us tonight? Let me know if you do. Literally take a minute, 60 seconds to catch you up to here. Super easy. All right. So I'm going to glue this guy down. Yeah, these envelopes are nice and large. And so they make for a decent sized journal or folio. So I didn't want to get rid of them. It's just, I just have a little bit more work getting these things prepped. And I think maybe I won't cut that one because this has a nice large opening. So I'm just going to glue that down. Oh, not a problem, Christy. Um, you know, if I had to go back through a whole big old thing, then I would probably wouldn't do that. I know because I know you watch the replay. But it's super easy. And so if you number your number your envelopes one through five. Um, yeah, I, hopefully you can see that because it's craft. And you might not even need to uh, number them, but you'll be able to tell by mine. So envelope number one, envelope number two. I'm going to slide envelope number two into envelope number one. Okay, just like that. So this is going to be actually, Christy, I'm going to show you this so you'll know what, what you're ending up with. Here's one I already made. So this is the envelope flap. There's envelope two. Big old journal taking up a lot of space there. It's envelope two pocket there. There's the back of envelope um, three. Now this one, I went ahead and covered the whole thing and sliced the edge open. And we'll do that so that you have one big pocket there. And then there's envelope four. There's envelope five, and there's envelope one, which is the back cover. Okay, see how simple it is? So you're going to take two and slide it into one, and then you're going to glue the back flap of two only. So if it's easy enough for you to do this, to leave that down in there, <laughs> if it wants to stay, the bigger the envelope, the easier this is. So if you need to take it out and put glue on the back flap and put it in, try to use a glue, not art glitter glue, that, that so a glue that doesn't dry quite so quickly. But you're going to put, I'm going to do it this way. On the outside flap of two, the top flap, on the outside only, you're going to put I just refilled this Barely Art, and it's like totally watery. I don't know why. But maybe that will give me a little more slide time. That's good. Okay, and then you're going to slide number two 
back into number one. Hopefully, before it sticks and dries, the tinier the envelopes are, the more difficult it is to do. But you're going to get that down in there Whoop. on both sides. Wow, that one just was really being difficult. Look at all that glue I got on there. I don't want glue out there. It's okay. Just wipe it off. All I want is glue on that inside. So that inside flap adheres down. And now I've got two glued inside one on the from the outside flap so I can still access the pocket one. And I'm sure she's already to that point. She probably already had it down while I'm fiddling with that top. <laughs> but yeah, the little ones are harder to get down in there. But they work. And I hate to pull them too far because I'm always afraid I'm going to tear them while pulling it. But I got to get some of that glue off my hands. I pull out my baby wipes and they dry out in like 30 seconds. So I just spritz them with water. Okay, so that's two and that and one together. Now you're going to grab two more which would be number three and number four. We're going to put them together and we're going to join them together only on the flap. So on the outside of three or the inside of flap four, you can put your glue. doesn't matter which one you do, the outside of one or the inside of the other. Might be easier to put it on the inside of four. Okay, so there's four, and here's three that I'm going to put right in next to it, and I'm joining those two together on that flap only. So now it's like it's one envelope with that flap, but I can turn this, and I, I can see that I've got three and four together. Oop. Knocking everything over. Give it a minute to dry. Okay, so one flap and I've got envelope three and envelope four. Okay, and then this one is going to go inside envelope number two. Like that. So I've got two and three now side by side. We'll make sure that's all the way in. So you can put the glue on it and then slide it in. Or if you think that you can get your nozzle in there without tearing it all up, you can slide it in and then put the glue on. I have to get my hand out of the way. It's a shadow so I can see with the light how far down to go with glue. I don't want to glue the whole pocket closed, just the flap. Okay. And it moved up a little bit, so I want to make sure that I've got that pulled down because I still want this to be able to close. Okay. Okay. So one and two were joined at the beginning. Then I joined three and four together and then slid them into number two. So now oh, there did your oh, undo. Your undo. You uh, like no, off. it is not. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Uh, of course it's not. <laughs> yeah, that number five, you're operating. That number five, you're gluing in. So, not yet. So, okay. So I have two, and I just glued three and four in it, and then one is the back cover. So leave it open to the back cover, and now grab number five. So here's number five. I know it's probably harder to see on the craft. That is number five. Okay. And five is going to go right here inside. No, <laughs> maybe inside. If it helps, bend it backwards completely. But inside number one. So I just turned it upside down. I don't want to confuse you by turning it upside down. Yeah. The smaller the envelopes, the more difficult it is to, to get them in there. The bigger envelopes, there's just so much more room to work with. Okay, so that's number five, slides into number one. Come on, slide on in. 
Okay, I always like to fit it dry just to know how far do I have to get it in, make sure that it's still going to close and everything is working properly before I glue it. So if I go back here to the back, I've got one as the back cover and number five that I slid in there. I'm going to go ahead and get glue on the outside. Oops, I just pulled it right out. On the outside of the flap of number five. Glue on the outside of the flap of number five. And I probably should have pulled out a glue that wasn't drying so quickly because if you put the glue on the flap and then slide it in, it is easier, but it's hard to do with art glitter glue, even barely art glue. There just isn't much time to move it around. And I'm not going to worry about getting right up to the edge because I can put some. Okay, so I want to make sure that it's positioned properly, that it's slid down in there, that it will still close. It does, so I can burnish that down now. That lid would flap the lid of that envelope. <laughs> Okay, so that flap is down there, but now I know I didn't get it all the way up to the edge, so I'll just go back here and put a little bit right along there. <clears throat> okay, there you go, and that's it, Christy. There's your opening at the front, the flap, and cute to put something on the inside there, and that your closure goes on there, and then you have envelope number two, number three, the back of number three, there's number four. Back of number four, back of number five, five and one. Okay. Woo. Margie oh. said you could trim a sliver off of each side of the flap to make it easier to go in if you have trouble too. You could. And yes, that makes perfect sense. What she's saying is the flap right here, you could come right here and trim a little sliver off this right here. I would go to the point, angle from the top to the point that just makes the top a little smaller and it will slide in easier. She is absolutely correct. That would make perfect sense. Okay. Domestic Wild is here, Kelly. Hey, Kelly. Good to see you. So many envelopes. Yep. Got to do something with them. So if you take five or six and make a good signature and make yourself two, three, four signatures, and then bind them into a cover. It's a it's an awesome book, an awesome journal or folio. You could even call it a folio book if you would. It's not really. Okay, see, so here's the thing. What's the difference in a folio and a book? Debbie's been telling us that. A folio folds over on itself, and a book has pages, turns like a um, an album. Sorry, an album, not a book. An album has pages and turns that turn like a book. So these, you could put some flippies and flappies inside it that's folio-like, but when you look at this, this has pages that turn. So this is, if you want to use it as a photo album, it's an album, um, or it's a book. So it's, it's really not a folio. And I have done three or four of these and, and then um, put them in a cover and they make an amazing journal. And the pockets are always good. So there's good storage stuff in them. And then there's always the back of every envelope. So you've always got the flat um, sides to do stuff on for decorating and adding tuck spots and belly bands and pockets and all the stuff. Okay, so I'm bringing this down. Should just put a little more undo on that. Okay. And the thing is, these things, the one I'm showing you is just very basic. But once you've got the concept of how to put it together, you will just go crazy. I mean, you can do all kinds of stuff. And I don't even need to tell you what, because you can look at it and go, oh, I could stick another envelope in here. A smaller envelope right there and have it flap open, but it's smaller. You know, I could have something, glue something on here and have it flap out. You could do so many different things um, with it. So... You just need to have the basic concept and then you can, you know, do whatever you want with it. Um, but yeah, three of these makes a really nice three signatures. 
for a junk journal. And you can cover them with nice, neat, clean lines like that one I just showed you, or you can, um, you know, do them totally as, like a junk journal, cover them with book pages or um, other, you know, digital downloads or scraps, that other one that I'm putting together that has scraps. Oh, what happened there? No, do not seal. It folded way too far. There we go. Okay. All right. And then this is going to glue down. Now, you don't have to do this on every envelope. Again, I have to do it because this envelope pocket came all the way to the top. There was not that gap in there. This one, I don't have to do that. There's enough gap in here. But yeah, this one came all the way to the top. So I just loosen that adhesive a bit, fold it down, glue it down. It's going to be covered, but that gives it a little more stability. Okay. And you can even put things on the back, especially if you're using them as signatures in a book. There's a whole nother open page. All right. So let's get some of these little glue bits over here. Put the lid back on the undo so it doesn't all evaporate. Yeah, don't let your undo sit out overnight. That's probably not a good thing. I'm gonna put the you think? <laughs> <laughs> Unless you just, you know, feel the need to buy multiple bottles from me way sooner than you should. <laughs> oh man. It's like paper. Even though we have 50,000 pieces of paper, I still don't want to waste that one inch scrap that's pretty. <laughs> Throw it away. Okay. I think we're done with that. So now we've got this ready to cover it. Ready to cover it. Just checking to make sure I did. Now, even after, <clears throat> if we do this as a basic and even after, um, this is done. You can see I could go back and put a pocket on here or a corner tuck spot. There's one here. I can, could do something here. I didn't want to put a bunch of embellishments on this because I love this paper. I love the colors. Pretty. It's super pretty. Yeah. But I could put a little corner tuck spot over here or even a side, maybe a little side tuck. Um, you know, these are just solid pages. So you can still go back and add all kinds of tucks and pockets and whatever you want to do. And if you pull out a 12 by 12 paper pack, you're going to have a lot of scraps left over. Um, in fact, unless your envelope is too large, you probably be just fine with a um, an eight by eight paper pack or just loose scrapbook paper that you have. What is this one? I think it's seven. Yeah, seven and a quarter. Amy says, what is that all about? Why do we feel it necessary to keep up? I know. <laughs> I've got 50 million pieces of paper, but I have to quit making it. This. <laughs> <laughs> because it's so pretty. <laughs> it's so pretty. It's special to me and I want to keep it. I might can use it on something, right? I can't. I will. I can use it on something. Yeah, you can go back and, and add a one inch strip, make it a little tuck or something. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I mean, we, you know, it's that growing up, don't waste your food. There's kids in whatever country that don't have any food. <laughs> Same thing for our paper. Um, I'm thinking, I know, I've, yep, I do have, I've got some um, Minte day by day right here. Ooh, glam rock would be cool on that too. You know I've got, yeah. You know I've got a minte day by day here that's black and white and peach. So I'm thinking that maybe I will use that to decorate this one. Black and white and peach. Maybe I can get rid of a few things here. Oh, and this is the little teeny tiny journal that goes inside that um, that big one and all the cards that will get tucked in all the tuck spots and pockets. 
than those those of you who came in late. This one, the one Candy's working on, she went around the edge with washi tape. Um, we decided that that would probably give it a, a good reinforcement. And so I started decorating this one. I went around the edge with um, book page to give it that reinforcement. And then I started um, just collaging it with uh, scraps that I have jazzed up or whatever you want to call it. So I'm, I'm barely, barely into that one. So I will finish that one and show you when I'm done for sure. But meanwhile, back at the ranch, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> so the first thing I always want to do if I'm using a paper pack is decide which piece I want on the front. Because that's the first thing you're going to see. And if there's something I really love and I want it to be visible right there on the front, like the cover, then I want to pull that out first before I accidentally use it for another page and then wish I had had it for the front. So there's should be two of each of these. So let's see what... I don't pet my paper. I need to do something with it. <laughs> I I so much. <laughs> pet it as you use it. <laughs> uh, uh, and, and, and Margie had a typo. Uh oh. <laughs> I didn't say paper petter. I still used one D. <laughs> the paper Peter. <laughs> you paper Peter. <laughs> uh, no. Peter paper had a peck peck whatever. Yeah, Sylvia yeah. said it would be good for me to use my paper before I stashed away to pro to project another day. Then yeah. I can't find it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I like this one a lot. This is Day by Day. The paper pack is called Day by Day, and it is by Minte. It is a gorgeous pack, black and white. It's just got a little touch of um, teal green with the greenery, little touch of peach. Very cool tile. Uh, Amy has never seen paper like that. Oh, Amy, you've got to come back to our sale. Yeah, that is Minte. Uh, Minte. Minte <laughs> and 13 Arts has very yes. pretty paper like that. Yes. Yeah, we've been doing a lot of 13 Arts and Minte both. Um, which reminds me, guys, I'm in the process of setting up the website. And we've been talking about some of the things to carry on the website. And there's so many. Here's the here's the front of it, Ame, day by day. I do have these in stock, by the way. Uh, but there's so many. The cover is always a fussy cut sheet. So many different brands that have cool things that we love. And there's no way to carry everything, you know, from every brand. So, But there are things from Prima. There are things from Tim Holtz. There might be something from Graphic 45. There are, you know, the, things from Finnebar, Finnebar and um, obviously the Stamperia and the Minte and the 13 Arts and all of these. So um, if there is something in particular that you would like to see me carry in on the website, in the shop, um, feel free to send me a message. I'm not going to like carry everything that Prima has, but Prima has some gorgeous paper pads that we all love. So um, I'll just get, you know, those things. Um, there might be some mediums from Finnebar that are, that, that we love that might be different from some of the Stamperia ones that we're using. So, yeah, you know, and we don't want all the Graphic 45 or all the Chow Bella, but there's probably a couple paper packs here and there that we would love to have. So I am, you know, I'm always open to input of, of what you guys like to see. Okay, I really love that door too. Wouldn't that be cool on the front cover? A little bit uh, large, but if I cut it off here and cut it off there, that would still look like a full door, wouldn't it? It's got the lock. And, hmm. Okay, here's another thing, guys. If you are left-handed or you like it to go... She couldn't, she couldn't cover those papers up. What do you do with it? I know. <laughs> well, here... Uh, I mean, yeah, this one is Minte, too. This one is called Nightfall. And you see, I'm not covering the papers up. I don't see any need for me to decorate these pages because the paper is so gorgeous. This is uh, that 
the jewel tones, purple and teal and um, like a, a muted harvest gold. So, so pretty. I don't want to cover it up. Love it. So yeah, I'm not covering these pages. <laughs> That's why I like doing things like that. And like Margie said, she's going to cover hers in um, or make envelopes out of scrapbook paper so she doesn't have to cover them. So you could actually take these and make envelopes. Um, I just like covering the envelopes because then I don't have any part that gets glued or hidden inside. And then I don't have to decorate it. Okay, so I really like that page. That's a good one too. Climb the stairs to come inside. Um, that's not front coverish to me. That's really pretty, but not front cover. <clears throat> Minte always has some great cracked walls. Just great shabby vintage crackety walls. And they've always got gorgeous uh, flower sheets that compliment. And then there's the, ah, I might be, I've already used a couple pages for something. Let's see, what's that? One, two, three, four, five. I guess that's six. I guess that is all of them. I only see one of this staircase though. The other side of that is all the windows, but I wouldn't put two of these in one book anyway. So I might've used one of these sheets for something else. <clears throat> okay, so do we like, oh, you could turn this around and have it go the other direction. If you're left-handed and you like to open it this way, your flap can be over here. This is just where you're going to put your closure on that flap. So, totally your decision. Do it whatever feels best for you. All right, so we're going to use, oh, I like that one too. So I'd have to make sure we keep that to be able to use it. I'm going to get the whole wreath in. So it'd probably be like that. Okay. Shall we use the door on the front cover or shall we use this staircase? That's very cool looking. Let's see. What would we get here? We could get all the way up to there. Don't need that. Okay, so we would get that. That would be cool too. Hmm. Even this right here would be cool seeing the stairs going off, but having the gate and all the flowers. Not that one. Uh, I don't know. What do you guys think? The door or the stairs? I need the windows tool. <laughs> That's these back here. Yeah. Oh goodness. Um, she says, oh. "Stop throwing that paper." <laughs> so okay. So she hasn't seen the window in the door book either, has she? Oh no. <laughs> oh no. What do you think, Candy? Uh, where are you yeah. putting it? Where are you putting it on the on the, the front? Maybe I don't want to use this one. On the I front, I'd probably put the door. If you got one inside, I'd put the steps. I'd probably do the door. I like doors better. But the I steps like are pretty door. good. Yeah, but maybe the steps on the back. Maybe the steps on the back. You go in the door here, and when you get to the back, you're coming down the steps. Out. <laughs> yeah. I can't decide if I really want to use this or not. I'm not sure there's an, as much black on it as I would like against this white. I mean, I could always um, ink it black around the edges, but... Um, hmm. <laughs> Let's see what else I've got right here. Some pages. There's black and gold and pink. This is Glam Rock. 
That's pretty. I don't mind cutting glam rock up because I like the colors and there's some cool components, but you know, I don't necessarily want the whole theme. <laughs> yeah. That'd make a cool cover, wouldn't it? Bigger, a bigger, slightly larger, barely, barely larger envelope. That'd be cool so that you get the whole mirror in there. That would be neat. Oh, I like the back of that one too. Yeah, I'm going to assume that Ame has probably not seen the door and the window book. <laughs> there, there, oh, there's Lady. Mm. Oh, Ame, you got to check out Minte. You would love all of them. They're very, very pretty. This has, uh, this is pretty, but it's got a lot more white. I want more of a darker color against the white envelopes. Although the backs of some of them do have the dark green, like that. But I don't want, I don't want double layer necessarily. So I really like that page a lot. That is cool. Maybe, maybe, maybe. See, the, the more paper I have, the harder it is to make a decision. <laughs> maybe, maybe I've been wanting to use these too. Maybe I will see no, is that? No, that is not big enough. Um, hmm. I've been wanting to use some of these pages. And then I could vintage photo of the edges. Let's see. Mm, that's pretty nice. Hmm, that is kind of light. This is the same. Ah, man, I wish those were just a little bit larger to cover that whole page. Um, but I'm thinking about these, where did I put the smaller, smaller ones? I work on there. Hmm. Hmm. She says, uh, I get, okay. So you call the glam rock and then. The digitals right there are vintage by me, correct? Or vintage something? Um, vintage letters or vintage by me, one of the two. Which these are not digitals. These are, no, these are um, out of a pack. I think at one time. For, had, did you get those from a, from a. I, I think at one time I had these at the sale and they were, they were two uh, separate yeah. packs of vintage type. Um, yeah, paper. you might watch because those are those are from Vintage by Me or Vintage Letters. She oh, has really? Those, yes. Okay, I will go check that out. I purchased them in packs. In packs yeah. Like that. Just, okay. you're getting, yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> so I've get. Yeah, I was going to use these and one of these. These are from Vintage Joy. Um. Um. I really like these. Her little um tags there. <clears throat> But wait a minute. I know I had, I did have a. <laughs> Margie says she loves suckers. Or I mean, introducing new people to wonderful paper. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Who cannot love Minte, right? Laura says she's conquered the ribbon. I am oh, queen. Right. So I buy more ribbon. What'd you do? Get rid of it all? <laughs> um, put it all up on rings and hung it all up. And Sylvia says, for some unknown reason, I resist sideways tucks. I've made horizontal slots to insert tags. 
Although, <laughs> Lord knows, I have enough pockets to last me way into the 22nd century. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That is funny. Um, let's see. I'm just glancing through a couple more of these Mente or Stamperia packs to see if I want to use one of them. I've got another paper pack there I might use. A paper pad that I can just pull them out and... Ooh! No, I don't want to use that. I'm not ready to. I'm not ready to cut that one up yet. <laughs> uh, dress my craft would be pretty on there. Okay. Oh gosh, Ame's gonna want to see all these, huh? <laughs> oh, Ame, you could just go back and. Uh, I don't know. You can go to. Uh, Oh, man, I'm working on the website. As soon as I get the website up, I'll have the Minte in there. So you can see it there. But you could probably go to Minte, Minte's website and look at them. Ooh, that Botany would be pretty, too, that newest Minte. It's got some good black. Um, black and botanical. Let's see, Stamperia. Ooh, Adelier would be cool. Let's see, what's this one? Wonderland, clockwise. Okay, that's what I'm gonna do, clockwise. Gosh, I hate, almost hate doing that though because I love both sides of the paper. <laughs> that is the hardest part is gluing down the paper. Although I am enjoying it way more being able to look at it made into something than just the paper itself. But yeah, it's tough because look at that, how amazing that is. And then this with the brown and the patina. Although probably use those and then turn that over and use the back some good cards all right i'll take the cards out cut those to put in the pockets so i'm looking for what i want to be that front that is good too what i want to be the front cover that's cool more tags Mm, that's pretty. Did you ever notice that these two pages are exactly the same, the back of one and the front of the other? Except this one has patina in the background, and this one's got rust and patina. This one's got a clock on it. This one doesn't, but they're but they're identical otherwise. Okay. This would be a cool front. Every possibility begins with courage to imagine. Sometimes flying is not enough. This would be a good one to mix with time as an illusion, too. I need two packs of these. For hmm. Sometimes flying is not enough. I do like that. I do like this. So... Although I would love for that to be visible out here. So maybe I put something over the whole thing and then fussy cut this out and place it farther to the right. Because I'd like to be able to see that same. Oh, that suggest for the store. She doesn't like using the same stuff over and over. So I plan on buying each pack once. Hmm. Interesting. Big stuff like paints, inks, and doily doilies, and especially embroidery. That would be cool. Yeah, that's true. Let's see. Okay. Get back here. 
checking for one more. Because I don't even make anything anymore. So why do I need more paper? <laughs> Who says that? Emmy. And Marty <laughs> said, so you can start making again? <laughs> so we're creating with us, Emmy. Yeah, we would love to have you create with us. Saturday Night Live, Monday Jump Starts, Thursday Mass Makes. Cheryl's going to decorate her journal and post it tomorrow. Nice. Thank you, Cheryl. I love seeing the things that you guys make. It's, um, it's inspiring. It's very inspiring. Ooh, around the world is another good one. Yep. Yeah. Um, I wonder what happened to my time as an illusion. I probably didn't get one because we ran out. I know, I love that one. Me too. I'm pretty sure that there's more in the order that just came yesterday or the day before, whatever that was. All right, so... Harmony. That would be another good one. Okay. You know, I had a wood penguin and it would look really good on here. Do you think I can find that thing now? A wood penguin? Cool. Yes, that was wood. Aww. I put them away the other day. That's why I can't find them. <laughs> See? We should never put them away. Yeah, they've been laying out here in the way for a while. So I'm like, oh, I'll just put these away. Now I don't know what they're Ame, um, hey, check this one out. This one's called Harmony. It is so pretty. There's the fussy cuts. Oh, I needed a little bird on something else. Oh, it was on that, that quad pocket I made Thursday. I needed a little bird to sit on the shoe. Okay, this door will be gorgeous, won't it? Oh, yeah, that's my favorite color. Yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. That's why it'll be perfect. Where did you put my wood penguin, Marianne? I'm sorry. Um, I thought I was helping putting it away. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh, I know who did it. Sylvia did it. She put it with her door. Like <laughs> this door is going to be the front then. Okay. Even the back is pretty. Of that. Yeah, I got to show, show Ame this. I love these colors. These birds are so gorgeous. So the window. Look at the back of this one. I love this. This is one of my favorite pages right here. <laughs> Laura says it's in the freezer. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the freezer looking for it's in the freezer looking for an igloo. That's what it's doing. Yeah, really. <laughs> Very well be. <laughs> your daughter, it's on the floor underneath the leg of your chair. <laughs> no, because I had a penguin. It was four animals and they were all I had two of each. Uh -huh. Wood. And okay. Got them somewhere. I bought them at the Dollar Tree. Oh. And they oh, were yeah, really I remember. I don't know what I did with them. Shoot. He would be perfect on that. Yeah, he would. <laughs> I don't know. Nope, not hardly. Oh well, I'm gonna leave it until I find. Here's a page out of Bloomville. Um, <laughs> cut, cut up butterflies. Oh, there it is. Whole. I don't have the whole thing right there. Just the, just the page. Okay, this is gonna be our front cover. All right. So, if I want to leave a border, if you guys want to leave a border. You can do it any way you want. You can go to the edge. You can go over the edge. You can put something down over the edge that is your border. You could leave a border. You know, however you want to decorate, do it. But if I want to leave a border, then I will look at how uh, tall and how wide is my envelope. And let's see. This one is, wow, eight and three quarters by... Oh. Five and three quarters. And then I just take off a quarter of an inch. So eight and three quarters, eight and a half. 
by five and three quarters, five and a half. So eight and a half by five and a half is going to be the perfect size to fit on every one of these that is a solid page. Not that, but these. So one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to need five that are eight and a half by five and a half. <clears throat> so I'm going to start with this door because Mr. Door is going to be our front cover. And I need a paper trimmer. And I thought I wasn't going to need, so I moved it out of the way. Eight and a half by five and a half. So I want to make sure that I get the best part of the door in since this is the front. I'm going to take the branding strip off. M Mente's branding strips are great because beside the, the name what... Sylvia says she found the she found the doors. Yeah, I remember that now after I said it. Oh, yeah. She lost a gessoed envelope. So they're with the envelopes. My penguin is with her envelopes. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Sylvia stole it. Yeah. Who stole the cookies from the cookie jar? <laughs> uh, um, Mente's um, branding strips are great because they've got the, the name of the thing. And then they've got really cute little things that might be in your fussy cuts or that are around here. And they're great to use. Like this is the one from Nightfall. That's off the branding strip. It's got the flowers and the record player and perfect to put on there. I know it's kind of small to see that, but that's a record player with grapes and roses and all the kind of stuff. So, so hang on to those or at least I just do this. I like to leave plenty of room not knowing exactly what I'm going to do with it. And then I toss the the two ends so it doesn't have to be 12 inches long. All right, so what did I say? Eight and a half by five and a half. Oh, good size that I need here. Okay, so eight and a half tall. If I were to go all the way to the top, that would cut it off right there. If it didn't go, oh, I do want this in though, huh? Because this is, I want this in because that's really pretty. So let's see, we just cut that off. A little strip. I'll do something with. Okay, so I want that to be the top of the door. So I know it needs to be eight and a half down from there. But I also want to look at, it's only going to be five and a half wide. If I could keep some of these in bigger pieces and not cut that in half, it'll be more usable. So let me go like this. Five and a half. I got a whale. Oh, nice. He'll work too. And as soon as you put him on, you'll find the penguin. I found the penguin. Oh, you found the penguin? I think the whale might work better though. Oh, I didn't realize you found the penguin. Okay, so five and a half is right here and right there. And that gets the whole door in. So if I cut that, I can leave more whole pieces for doing something else. Okay, so five and a half. Cut stuff again. There we go. Ooh, that's pretty back there too. Oh look! So what Save is the bird. Time? You currently have a lot. She has a lot. I mean, what is what? She has a lot of Stamperia and a lot of Mente. Who, <laughs> Margie? No, you. Or me. Oh, yeah. A lot of Dress My Craft, a lot of 13 Arts. Margie, and most of it, not only do I have it, but I have it in stock for the shop. Fussy cutting book. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's a Mente book. I mean, yes. It's called the Windows Book. There's one called Winds. There's Windows, Doors, Frames, Junk, 
tags. Yeah. Uh, there's like separate books. five or six books of grunge. Um, the whole there's like a whole series of five or six with floral, you know, plants and flowers. And each book is about six by nine. And it's just pages and pages and pages of things to fussy cut and use. So, yeah, doors, the entire book is full of doors. Windows, the entire book is full of windows. We love them. Eight and a half. Yeah, when you said doors, I'm a, I thought, yeah, you probably haven't seen that yet. Um, and I do have, I do have, I think, all of those books in stock. So, okay, there's our there's front window book. Say that again. I said I have the window book. Oh, show. cool. Yeah, you want to show her? Hold on. Give me a hand to find the door book. Give me okay. a minute. <laughs> uh, mine's over there across the room, so I'll, I'll let you show her. Okay. Um, the there we go. Here. That door's going to be our front door. Awesome sauce. Okay. And then I need... How many more did I say? One... Two, three, four more that are going to be eight and a half by five and a half. Um, so if I want to choose the back cover, I'm going to keep all these off cuts because they're going to be great to use. Like these. Here's the door book. Oh, they, oh, look at that. Love the door book. And the back of the pages are colored if you don't like the doors. Yeah, exactly. Then they're they're um, grunge or marbled. Or yeah, they're light grunge. grunge. Yeah. There's the blue door I'm using right down the corner. It's just a smaller version. That's the one from Harmony. And then it repeats. So you get four pages of three, three, four of each. Page, three of each page. So there's like, um, yes, yeah, three of each page, three okay. of each page. So, page page. Page. so there's three of them. Yeah. Here's the windows book. It's <laughs> a cool one. I like the windows too. Yeah. Okay, those are cards. And then it repeats. So those are those two books. And there's many, there's more, but those are the two. There's, yeah, there's so all the other ones that we were naming. There's a lot of them. Yeah, she <laughs> put a window on the back, out the back side. But I really love this side. I really love this side even more than the window. Yeah. That's oh, horrible though. The the bird is so cute. But we could probably do this and save the bird. I could do it this way. I only need eight and a half by five and a half. So I'm thinking about that to be the back cover. All right. So let's do that. If we can save Mr. Bird. Uh, <clears throat> Okay, five and a half. We'll go to there. Eight and a half. Would we'll go to there. All right. Eight and a half that way. Then we think we can save both birds. Lost well, part of his beak, but that's okay. <clears throat> and five and a half this way. This is one of my favorite pages of all time. Right there. Just love that. So, pretty. so that'll make a great back cover to that. I think I like it that way. <laughs> Margie said, if you tell your cop hubby that I got you into in this, I am so in trouble. Talking about 
books. I don't remember the cost of the books. Um, the books, okay. the books, they moved, they had an increase to nine dollars. But nine dollars. Okay. at the last sale, I put them out at the last sale on at the old price at eight. So I would still do them for eight dollars until we get them up on the website. So yeah, eight dollars a piece. Okay, so now we need two more. <laughs> I mean, since thinking about selling the cabin since we don't use it, I can buy all the paper. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> totally understand, Ami. Totally understand. But, honey, <laughs> this paper is prettier than the cabin. <laughs> uh, yeah, we used to have a cabin, too. <laughs> okay, I'm going to glue this one down. I like the back of this one, too. Very pretty. Okay, I'm gonna mute. I'm gonna heat emboss this. Wood okay. Here. Oh, cool. Yeah. So those of you who are making or going to make envelope books, please do post them in the group. I really love seeing them. It's so inspiring because everybody's take on it is always just slightly different. So, okay, let's not forget that we have a um, challenge going on right now. Um, if you did not see the folio that Debbie made, I, oh, I'm trying to remember the date. I'd have to go back and look. It was just like two or three oh. weeks ago. We had right before our live, it was right before, it was on a Thursday, right before the Thursday mass make, we went live for, I want to say about 12 minutes. And Debbie showed the folio that she made and we released a challenge because we are tr uh, working to get the YouTube page up to a thousand subscribers and we're over 600. And so the challenge is, uh, and it goes tell you how it goes first before what it is. It goes to June 25th, which is two weeks from tonight. And on June 25th, everybody who's qualified, we will um, draw out somebody and they will win that folio that Debbie made. And it is gorgeous. It is made with Stamperia Passion. And she has a whole, a whole pack of um, additional pieces to decorate it with that she left so somebody could decorate it their own way. She did um, minimal decoration on it. It's it's so, so pretty. That paper is gorgeous. And she did a phenomenal job. The folio, it's a folio, folio, folio. It folds out like five times. It's absolutely gorgeous. Got to go look at it. Anyway, so the challenge is to invite um, and have come join us 12 people. And they need to join Facebook, uh, the Facebook private group and the YouTube, they need to subscribe to the YouTube page. So here's the deal. Within um, within a week, we well, within a couple of days, we had over 50 new people in the group. But within a week, we had 100 new members in the group. The group is over 700 now. So we've had lots of invitations. And you can go in there, go to, if you're on your phone, right at the top of the page, it'll have a, a button that says Invite. If you click that, it'll bring up a list of everybody that you're friends with on Facebook. And you can just scroll through your list and click on anybody that you want to send them an invite into Happy Paper People. So if you invite them into Happy Paper People, when they come in, they do not have to answer the questions. They are um, automatically um, brought in because they received an invite. They're not com coming asking to join. So... But once they join Happy Paper People, the private group, then we also need to encourage them to come over and subscribe to the YouTube channel because we want them to join us over here and make some of the fun stuff and participate in a lot of the things that we do. The Monday Jumpstart, the Thursday Mass Make, the Saturday Night Live, the sales, all the stuff that we do um, on YouTube. So they need to do both. They need to join Facebook, subscribe to YouTube. 
And so as soon as you have, keep a list of all the people that you invite. And when they come into the Facebook group, then um, encourage them to join or to subscribe to YouTube. I've put a post out there. I will do another one because there's a lot of new people. And um, we just keep encouraging them to uh, come over and subscribe to YouTube because they need to have subscribed to both. If you are someone new who has come in in the last week, you may enter this contest as well. This challenge is for everyone. So even if you just came in today, you still have two full weeks to invite people and um, have them come in and join the Facebook group and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Anybody and everybody is eligible for that. They have to be a member of the group. You have to be a member of the group, but everybody is eligible for that. So most definitely, um, there's a lot of people that have joined the group, as I said, but not uh, a, a low percentage of them have made it over to YouTube to subscribe. Okay. So that means that the people that invited them are not going to be in the drawing unless they have 12 people come over and subscribe on YouTube. So, um, believe me when I tell you, it'll be worth your while to, um, kind of follow up with the people that you invite and encourage them to subscribe to YouTube because, if there's not very many names in that drawing, you got a really good chance of winning. And go back and watch that a couple Thursdays ago, right before the jump start. Or I'm sorry, before the mass make. It was only like 12 minutes long, and it says something about, um, you know, releasing a new challenge or something like that. And uh, it, just take a look at that folio, Debbie made. It's absolutely gorgeous. She does beautiful work. So um, we still have two weeks though. We increased by uh, 12, by by over 100 in a week. So there's still plenty of time to, you know, invite people. Well, it's not really, Lucy. She says 12 is a lot of, pe a lot of people to know who craft. Um, you know, Gigi said right off the top, I don't know anybody except anybody that's in this group. So if you go up to that, invite word and you click on it and then you start scrolling through your Facebook friends. There are people that you know, um, you know, there's a lot of people from other groups, but don't just go into other groups and invite everybody. That's rude. I, I really don't want you to do that. Um, not nice. But there are people that like if I was in another group with Margie, I would invite Margie because she's my friend. You know, um, I'm not going to invite everybody in that group, even if they're acquaintances, but I'm going to invite her because she's my friend in that group. So there are people that you have, you know, other things in common with that, um, you know, might be interested in book art or mixed media. Um, you know, all the things that we do with, with books and paper is all kind of under the umbrella of book art. So, um, invite them. Anyway, G I remember Gigi specifically because she said that right off the bat. And I said, well, just go through your contacts and see who you've, see who you've got. And she, she invited, uh, I don't know how many she invited, but she had more than 12 join the Facebook group. I don't know if they've all subscribed to YouTube yet. Um, but she had more than 12. She said, wow, I didn't even know that I knew that many people to invite, but she had more than 12 immediately join the Facebook group. So please don't hesitate to invite them because I would love to see a lot of people get the opportunity to win um, Debbie's gorgeous folio. Um, folio, leo, leo. And it is so pretty. It is really, really pretty. Um, hmm. I'm thinking about what color I'm going to edge this in, whether it will be a shade of blue or it might be, might be a walnut, maybe a dark, dark vintage photo or a walnut. But Candy, are you back? Sorry, press on mute. <laughs> <laughs> She's talking to me. Yeah, I've been oh, here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, what time is it? Uh, it's almost nine o'clock. Come on, time. Okay. So I knew I heard. I knew I, I knew I heard the ten-minute warning buzzer, but um, I didn't know how much time had gone by since then. So yeah. So I want to remind you guys of that. If you go into the Facebook group. Up at the top where it says featured, that's not just a random thing. We only pin up there to the featured the things that are really important, like the uh, public page that you want to make sure that you're following because that's where we hold the Thursday sales on the public page. 
although we're not going to have one for the next two weeks. But also up there is the uh, Stamperia, new collections that just were released. In fact, they haven't even released them all to the public. I, I put a, posted there all four videos so that you could look at them because um, I need to get a pre-order in and I'm going to get that pre-order in this weekend. I will, I will go ahead and give you tonight if anybody still needs to look at those videos and see if you want to pre-order anything. Um, but you've got to let me know right away because I'm doing the Stamperia pre-order. want to make sure that we get it early enough. <clears throat> so, um, and because we all like, you know, a lot of the Stamperia, that's why we're not having a sale um, so that we can designate our money to get Stamperia. I don't want to, you know, let you not be able to get the new collections because if that's what you want, because you're buying all the other things. So um, anyway, we are uh, just a couple minutes from going. Any questions from anybody about, oh my gosh, Sandy, still the termites? Oh, ah. <laughs> Bye, Sandy. Love you. We'll see you on Monday. <laughs> Poor Sandy. She's been dealing with those stupid termites. Oh, we had uh, a lot though. <laughs> Thank you. Sylvia, it's the card makers. It's okay. We have a lot of card makers in our group. The thing is that we support all kinds of artists. And I look at, I don't make cards, but I look at the cards that people make who are card makers in the group. And I find inspiration in them to maybe make an art journal page or decorate a journal page you know, out of a junk journal or something like that. I find inspiration in Margie's crocheted um, afghans or quilts or, you know, Debbie's plate of food. Um, you know, when she takes great artistic pictures of her food because she went to culinary school. And so all of those things are inspiring, whether it's color or shape or design. But we need um, for our, our brains to be... Uh, you know, inspired by so many different things. So please don't hesitate to invite them because they're card makers, especially, you know, people have been making cards for years. They've got lots of, lots of great ideas um, that we can be inspired by. And hopefully some of the things that we show them will inspire them. Maybe they take a page out of, that you post in an art journal and they are inspired with that to make a card. So it's, I just find it inspiring to see everybody else's art of any kind. And you don't have to make cards, and they don't have to do art journals. <laughs> so, uh, let's see here. So, uh, yeah, we have, you would, yeah, you might be surprised, Sylvia, how many card makers we have in this group. A lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. Um, agree, but my girls are my age, stuck in 70 plus years. That's okay. That's, uh, Sylvia, you're not older than everybody else. We we are kind of a demographic here. <laughs> it's like, you know, I, you know, probably our, our, um, we're really, um, uh, we're real, probably really 45 to 80 is our demographic, you know, even 50 to 80, but 45 to 80 were, is probably our primary demographic there. So, you know, age, you know, how do you say it? Age does not, uh, or art does not discriminate with age. <laughs> uh, sometimes those who've been around and doing it a lot uh, longer have more ideas because they've been doing it a lot longer. So yeah, resisting the 21st century. Totally okay. Totally okay. <laughs> you get that crap one finished? Uh, this one? No, I didn't. Hey, let's show yours. Is it to point of finish of showing? Yeah, it's all but decorated. I haven't okay, put the decorations cool. on it. But... Here we go. Oh, cute. I like the whale. Oh, cute. Very cute. Oh, man. That and then I put these two together. Okay. So instead of splitting one envelope, she glued two of the envelopes together and made a stronger... For your pocket, because I might use this for ephemera, so I wanted the pockets. Mm, yeah, good idea. Um, oh, that's pretty. Oh, yeah. I like the penguins. I had a pocket here, I think. Okay. Because the way I glue the pages, I had it backwards. Oh. But back. oh, that's pretty. Wow. That's pretty. So you can even make it so that it is intended to stand on its side like that. Yeah. Yeah. Candy rocks. I agree. 
<laughs> yeah, Kelly's right. It all comes back around and becomes popular again. It's <laughs> yeah, it does. Never too late to make stuff. It's adorbs, Ame says. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, I just got to decorate it. And then, like I said, I probably won't decorate it heavy since I might use it as an ephemera folder. Right. So That'll be a cute ephemera folder, though. That's super cute. Yeah, that could be Eric's that. ephemera holder. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He would like that. <laughs> he's gonna he's probably gonna get the Savannah one. Oh, he will like that even better. <laughs> uh, okay, I'll finish mine and post them in the group. I have to get to work on them. And yeah, the, I want to finish up this one that I the junky one, uh, the grungy one that I was using with scraps. I want to finish up that one. But I will get them done and we'll post them in the group. And uh, we can't wait to see the ones oh, you guys make as well. That one's going to be so cool when you get it finished. Yeah. Well, the nightfall one's cool too. I like that pattern. I used that for one of my folios. Yeah, I remember you did a, a folio or something out of that one. Okay. But, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. And then that's going to be cool. That's going to be cool. It's small. Now I want a great big giant one. But, you know, you can make however many you want. They're so easy. So, so easy. <laughs> Anyway, that you know what? If I was putting them in a book as a signature, if I was going to make three of these and then make each one be a signature in a book, I would glue this flap right here. I wouldn't put the tie on it. I'd glue it on the two sides and let it be a pocket yeah. right there. And I'm then, so yeah, they're just awesome to put three of those, make a signature in a, in a book. Yeah. <gasps> Margie got her magnifying lap. Yay, Margie. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so glad. I'm so happy for you, Margie. Uh, keep your hand busy as, lo as long as you can. Keep your mind busy as long as you can. Yes, keep crafting. It'll help you live longer and not go crazy too early. <laughs> I'm already crazy. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks. Show your Facebook group post to me. How do I make it do that? Uh, you have. To Let's wait, wait, wait. What was it again? I didn't hear you. On the Facebook page. Oh, um, Ame, are you in Happy Paper People, the private group? And then there is the Happy Paper People public page. And that one you want to follow and like and make sure you have it set to give you notifications. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. We'll go... <clears throat> Oh, Cupcake, she's so cute. Okay, here we go. And group, whoops, wrong one. Wrong one, there we are. Okay, so if you go here to Happy Paper People and then you touch this word invite right here, it'll bring up all your friends in um, that are in Facebook and you can just click invite by any of them that um, you want to. And let's see, I could search. I'm going to pull it back here where I can see it. Let's see. Um, I mean, you're already in the group, aren't you? I'm not seeing it. Uh, hang on here. I'm going to go back and go right into members. I thought you were. Maybe it's been the. Yep. Okay. Ame, you're in the group. Okay. So we, we just need to check your settings so that you can see the posts. Um, so. Whoops. I did not mean to do that. Okay. So if you're in Happy Paper People here and go to, uh, like on an iPhone, it's on the bottom, the three little. <laughs> that say menu. It might be somewhere else and it might be three dots if you have an Android, but touch the menu, wherever is the menu, and then go to your settings. Pretty sure that that's where it's going to be in settings. Mine might look a little different because I'm um, admin of that. So, but when you go into settings, then you can uh, choose what um, option. Wait a minute. That might be for all of Facebook. Mm -hmm. I, say, I don't see it on mine. Let's see. But I don't do anything on the phone. I, always set I don't up. either. I'm always on the computer when I do that stuff. Yeah. So, um, 
<clears throat> Ame, go to Happy Paper People and find settings somewhere on that page. In your settings, um, you will want to choose that it will notify you on all new, uh, all new posts. Yeah, on the computer, you get the three dots for sure. Okay. And then you can, um, let's see. No, it doesn't give you that option. It does on the so, private um, page, the public uh, page, but not on the private page. I guess you automatically get it on the private page, maybe. Hmm. Um, Under the joined button, I have a drop down arrow and it says manage notifications. Okay. On the top right corner on the computer. On the happy so page. are you saying that it's one of these over here? No, reels. No, you see, no. I don't even see it on, I don't even see it on my phone. It's under the joined. When I go on the computer page, I show, okay. I show okay. my And mine isn't going to give the same options because I'm an owner of that group. So yeah, let me share it the same. If I go into manage or to settings, it's going to take me into admin. Yeah, hold on. Let me share the screen real quick. Okay. okay. She'll go play with it. Yeah, if you can get on a computer, it uh, seems to be easier to get those settings. Yeah, see, here jo joined. Oh, yeah manage notifications and then you have to all posts there you go and you want to see the highlights of the push notifications okay yes awesome awesome sauce so yeah invite uh invite people keep track of them and if you want to know if they've um uh subscribed on youtube you can shoot me a message with uh the list and i can tell you because i get um an email we can no longer see the list on YouTube. You used to be able to go look at the list yourself. Um, but I do get an email from YouTube that each time someone subscribes, which I don't usually bother to look at, but right now I have them going to a folder so that we can check them so that people can get in the drawing. So if you need to know, then um, just shoot me a message. Yeah, okay? that folio yo yo is really pretty, ladies. It is. If you're familiar with Passion from Stamperia, it's gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous, and yeah, I you know Debbie. She's a perfectionist to make it. She used Passion or House of Roses. What did she use? Passion. Was it Passion? Oh. Yep, with the music and the mm. uh, yeah, all that stuff. It's really pretty. It's gorgeous. It is absolutely. Ah, thank you, Sylvia. You are so welcome. I always enjoy spending a couple hours with you guys. So have a wonderful uh, Sunday, everybody. Relax, enjoy, reinvigorate, and get be ready for Monday Jumpstart. Monday Jumpstart, we are um, putting together our journal that we are making together start to finish. If you missed last week, I would highly encourage you to go back to last Monday, watch Monday Jumpstart, where we started making the journal together. Super easy. Actually, there's two tutorials in YouTube that are shorter than Monday Jumpstart that walk you through. It's making a junk journal start to finish um, part one and part two. And if you and, do those two, part one and two, then you'll be good to go with us uh, Monday. Ami is going to be joining us in debtor's prison. She says uh, she's going to need to know how many and what paper packs you have. She has way too many, Ami. Way too many. You're going to be in debtor's uh, prison. I, I may, you, it's probably better for you to give me a list of what you want. <laughs> and I'll tell you if I don't have any of them, <laughs> then for me to try to put together a list of what I have, because I have lots, both the Stamperia and Minte. Yeah, the Minte is gorgeous, isn't it? <laughs> so. Yes, very gorgeous. All right, guys. We'll see y'all Monday at Monday Jumpstart. Have a wonderful weekend. I may just shoot me a message. No Bye, problem. Ladies. Have a good night. Love, Love y'all. Good night.